Shabbat Shalom, Exacting Truth, Body Fellowship members, and of course, that precious Exacting Truth landscape of Body Fellowship believers across that fruited plain. That fellowship with us, irrespective of where your membership may lie. Welcome to another Exacting Truth Ministries Saturday Sabbath Facebook live stream. I am your host this morning, Shepherd and leading emissary of Exacting Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Solera R. Mann Jr. Will you bow your heads and pray with me at this time? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your omniscience. We thank you for your greatness and your glory. O oh, ancient of days, we are blessed and we are favored to arrive at another peaceful day of rest, the end of a week. Saturday, Sabbath, we're asking that you have your way moved by your spirit. We're asking that you allow your power to be made manifest even through the word this morning. We're asking that you remember all those that are in need of remembering everywhere. We say at Exactly Truth Ministries, we pray that you lift up every hung down head and that you strength, strengthen each and every one with the power of your glory and that you guide our steps in our path. And we're asking right now uh, that you just remember those who are once again inquiring and desirous that we intercede on their behalf. We pray that you give your provisions according to your riches and glory to your people. Widespread, widespread blessings all over this great globe. And we ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, beloved. We're blessed to have you present with us. Come on in and gather. We're going to ask that if it be the most high's will, and if you would so kindly uh, share and engage in uh, this message, even in the comments, if you so choose. We're blessed to have you here. We don't take it for granted, irrespective of how large or how small the crowd is. You gathered this morning, get up. I know it ain't easy. It wasn't easy for me this morning, getting out of the bed and coming to fellowship with us, but we're excited, beloved. Listen, the Great Family and Friends Day is coming soon. And we want to see you there. Those of y'all who are in other cities, we've been talking about this for a while. Get in the car and just plan to come and spend the morning and the afternoon with us in a powerful fellowship. And then we're going to break bread together. I'm telling you, we're not going to be the same. The Most High is bringing families back together. He is mending relationships. And so this is both powerfully and largely symbolic. So on March the 16th, Saturday, March the 16th. We want you to join us. Everybody that's a part of the fellowship that's began special giving. Y'all know this is not a ministry where we highlight or even talk about too much. And the Lord has blessed, so we don't have to with regards to giving. But these special efforts, this four-quarter outreach initiative that he's given Exacting Truth Ministries this year. And forgive us, just bear with us with these announcements, but it's important that we impress upon you not only the financial need that is necessary for us to outreach to the community and what the Most High call us to do. It's not coming to me and my family. It's going outward to be a blessing and to impact. We've got to begin to impact the world on a significant, significant and tangible basis. And our ministry is small. So, well, why don't you do it with tithing and offerings? Praise the Most High. You know, we're doing that, but we need extra help. And so we're not... Ashamed to ask for help. So many of you all begin to give so richly and you begin to just give so generously. And we thank each and every one of you all. We want y'all in the landscape. Listen, you can give digitally. You can give online. If you believe in this ministry, so many of you all, hundreds of people gather, watch throughout a week span or whatever. Let the Most High lay it upon your heart to send a seed to be uh, help in these matters. Y'all know we don't talk about it much. And when we fulfill the purpose of what the Most High called us to do, first one is Great Family and Friends Day. We're having a catered uh, luncheon afterwards where we're bringing families together because of the important bond uh, that comes with dining, the covenant that comes with, he wants to restore some relationships, some people that don't get along, you know, so it may seem like that that's far-fetched for so many of y'all, but we just had the lesson in the study a couple of months ago with regards to the power of and the power that is encompassed in dining. So we're going to do the will of the Lord. We thank you for helping us. We're going to move on because we've got a great word for you this morning. 
We want y'all to be in prayer for those that are on the prayer list. Uh, we're praying for my nephew, Justin Davis, wife, uh, Kare Corelli Davis, daughter-in-law of those precious Davises. We're praying for my Lord, uh, Mama Womack, my brother, uh, Prophet Scotty. Uh, they just, I believe, had, had a passing of a nephew and Scotty's cousin, if I'm not mistaken. And we just want to hold Mama Womack and Pastor Scotty up in, in prayer. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And just all of those that we know Auntie Maggie is always asking for prayer. Love your auntie. She act like, you know, she don't know nobody when we call her. But uh, we just want to hold just all of the names. I'm not going to take up, you know, time that people have been sick. I want to pray for the Solera man, the third family, and my daughter-in-law and my precious grandbaby, Symphony, overcoming whatever it is that's in the air. Reverend Mann been sick lately, but we feel strengthened this morning. Thank you for your prayers. We want to remember those who are approaching another succession around that great star. My beautiful daughter-in-law, Natasia, her birthday is on tomorrow. Lady Joy's birthday is coming up in a little bit over a week on March the 9th. Those who have March birthdays, we just want you to celebrate them. Find folks uh, cash app. We need to get in the business of being a blessing to people and not looking for anything in return. Remember that we're someone's assignment, but it's always nice to be nice. And so... If I, you know, didn't name somebody's name, that's a birthday of March. I'm sure it's in the announcement. Uh, pray for a shepherd, man, because I don't even read the announcements. But, you know, they get on me all the time. But we love y'all. There ain't a whole lot y'all can do about it. Amen. Find your holy writ. It's time for the word now. Hallelujah. If somebody haven't already tuned off because of the announcements and such, we're going to ask that you join us in the reading out of the holy writ. This morning, we're going to derive the scriptural basis that forms the foundational floor for our text out of the Greek scriptures, notably Paul's letter to the body Ecclesia at Rome, Romans chapter 12, verses 16 through 18. And we're going to reference the New Living Translation of Romans chapter 12, verses 16 through 18. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, beloved, and it reads as... Thus, live in harmony with each other. Okay, I can log off and end the message right now because some of y'all don't even feel like that that's possible. Lord, help us all. Paul writes, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Wow. And don't think you know it all. Lord, Father, help us. Verse 17, never pay back evil with more evil. Some of y'all are going to be like, all right, shepherd man again, once again, woke up this Saturday, Sabbath morning and chose violence. No, this is the direction of the Holy Spirit through the inspiration of his word. Hang in there with us. We're going somewhere powerful with this this morning. 17, again, never pay back evil with more evil. Help us to mature, Holy Ghost, me included. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Praise the Most High. And finally, verse 18, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. I'm going to say that for those of y'all who are on the balcony, even though we're at home and we're on live. <laughs> verse 18, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. May the Most High add a blessing and enriching to the reading of the Holy Writ. I borrow this phrase from my brother, Dr. Rodney Smalls, pastor of New Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Harrisburg, for the time that is mine. Beloved, the title of our text this morning is simply titled, Come Let Us Reason Together. I want to revisit the end of that 18th verse in Romans 12, which states, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Are we doing everything we can, everything we, Paul the Apostle encouraged in his letter to the body of Ecclesia at Rome, the Roman Assembly. Are y'all doing everything y'all can to live in peace with one another? Beloved, we're in the year 2024. At least when you go by the standard Roman Catholic compiled Gregorian calendar. And when you examine history to this point, you will see that we have bear witness to some uncanny destructive forces over the ages. 
Just take into consideration, beloved, for example, the biggest theatrical hit of the past year by far was the film Oppenheimer, a movie about the secretive race for the United States to become the first nation to develop the nuclear bomb, all taking place during World War II an expansive conflict that ultimately produced a casualty rate estimated to be somewhere between, listen y'all, 45 and 60 million people. And that is probably a casual estimate. World War II technically began when the leader of Germany at that time, which was Adolf Hitler, decided to invade Germany's neighbor to the east, Poland. Subsequently, driving France and Great Britain to declare war on Germany and enter into conflict with Germany in an effort to stave off Germany's violent aggression and dominant expansion efforts across Europe. Any of these actions and details sound familiar today? <laughs> Nevertheless, I digress. We have witnessed the power in other examples of aggressive, combative actions throughout history. We switch to another concept. We've witnessed the power of what society in general often refers to as mother nature. <laughs> Naturally occurring weather events so powerfully destructive that they leave devastation in their path, often causing huge casualties and often ringing up tremendous levels of the need for resources in order to recover and to restore the devastation that has been left in these weather events wake. And the basic criteria needed for any storm is simply a clash or interactive meeting of atmospheric high pressure with atmospheric low pressure systems. If you can take the two examples we use, Hitler's aggression and the Third Reich towards Poland drew the whole world into World War II. Oftentimes, all you need is a low-pressure system and a high-pressure system meet together, and you've got a violent storm. It's that simple. There are very, what is your point, Shepard Man? There are very simple things. Oftentimes, one act or uh, one type of condition that's just right, that can cause something that becomes historic and not in a positive sense. We've witnessed astounding wildfires, both naturally occurring as well as human in causation. Fires so quick moving and powerfully destructive that they've consumed millions of acres of land, destroyed entire cities, beloved, and taken countless wildlife and human lives in their wake. The state of Texas, we're in prayer for everyone in the great state of Texas, is currently battling the largest wildfire in its history that to this moment has surpassed consuming a million acres of land thus far. Once again, we stand and we kneel in prayer on behalf of those that are in Texas right now. These destructive powers are often ignited by a single lightning strike or a single match or burning ember left over from some person camping in the woods somewhere oftentimes. We've witnessed monstrous earthquakes. Wow, Shepard, man, this is a little bit depressing. Hang in there, we're going somewhere with it. We've witnessed monstrous earthquakes, some that have swallowed up entire cities and have rendered extinct entire island nation throughout human history. And these powerful phenomena are often triggered by random Shifting of the Earth's tectonic plates, which is naturally occurring in those tectonic plates shift all the time. Are y'all praying? Random earthquakes underwater in an ocean somewhere throughout history has also been the cause of huge tidal waves or tsunami, as they're otherwise referred to, that when reaching landfall have wiped away entire coastlines due to the monstrous and incredibly tall waves that strike the coastline, wiping away all of the architectures there and bringing and pulling out 
in their great tides to see the people that get caught in these encounters. Lord have mercy. We've witnessed volcanic eruptions so amazingly devastating, like the infamous eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed the Roman city of Pompeii in 79, common era. I could just go on and on. I could spend the rest of this morning detailing the endless accounts of devastation incurred by a myriad of destructive forces over the ages, beloved. I know y'all not gonna stay with me all morning, so we gonna conclude these examples right now. Y'all get the gist of what you're the man is saying. There, we've seen some devastation over time. Often hasn't taken a whole lot to cause these things that have caused just such widespread destruction and death. However, I would be greatly remiss. Y'all had to know we were going somewhere with this. We always are, thanks to the Holy Ghost. We'd, we'd be greatly remiss this morning, beloved, and it would be stridently irresponsible of me, not to mention, quite possibly, the most commonly witnessed destructive force amidst mankind in all of history. Some of you all might say, you need to add arguably to that, but I believe and it is my conviction. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's even been my own personal experience. And I do believe that it is the most commonly witnessed that is on record to determine the endless lives and casualties to both individuals, relationships, families, businesses, and or organizations due to something so common, so pervasive, but also commonly so ridiculously trivial. Y'all, and I'm digressing again, we have found our way into arguing about any and everything, and oftentimes, sometimes it appears to be nothing. We will argue about the rent, the bills. We will argue about the neighbors. We will argue about intimacy. We'll argue over what we're going to eat that day. We'll argue about who's going to kill the next bug that's crawling. We'll argue about who used up the rest of the gas without filling the car back up. We'll argue about spending. We'll argue about, pra about packages that come into the house. We'll argue about stealing. We'll argue about saving. We'll, we'll argue about politics. We'll argue about relationships. We'll, we'll argue about uh, sexual preferences. We'll argue about presidents. We'll argue about games. We'll argue about child sports. I got to stop. They, I, I... We'll argue about the past shepherd man talk too long. Give too many examples. It's too long-winded. Folks literally argue about any and everything. And beloved, in the year 2024, all over this planet, arguing and being combative has taken a devastating toll on society abroad. Can somebody say amen? Some folks out there may be thinking or saying, come on, shepherd man, come on now. Come on, are you really going to harangue us about arguing? Yes. <laughs> Y'all say, but we all do it. I know, that's the problem. I'm sure you've engaged in a few yourself, haven't you, shepherd man? Well, beloved, the answer to that would be an overwhelming yes, I have. I'm not ashamed. Y'all know I'm a confessing preacher. It would seem as though I've spent a lifetime myself arguing, let me confess, often angrily. And I will confess with zero shame this morning because I want to help somebody that arguing in the past has nearly cost me everything on more than one occasion. My relationship, the love of my children, 
jobs, opportunities, you name it. If y'all don't want to be transparent, I will. Not someone accosting me or threatening my family or something that you feel like would be worth it in the end. Just over how I want to feel or exerting my opinions about something angrily or trying to make sure that my voice is heard. My indignation, my wrath in the area of words nearly cost me everything. And you know what? Looking back in hindsight, because they say hindsight is twenty twenty, it never was worth it. Beloved, it's as if we were given, or if we were given rather, excuse me, the choice between achieving unity oftentimes in important areas of our lives and the freedom to be argumentative and violently combative, we all would wake up every day and simply choose violence. It seems like that getting our point across when we're angry, in an angry way, is far more important than living together in love. This may not be what you wanted to hear this morning, but this is what somebody needed. Love ones. The nation appears to be Hopelessly divided, socially, politically, religiously, and Lord knows financially. The rest of the world seems hopelessly and endlessly divided as well, and engaged in countless arguments as we speak. I had a conversation with my siblings, my two older sister, sisters, recently, and we, the topic came up about at least one of my sisters and her spouse, we looking at moving elsewhere in the world because America is just a mess. And then when myself and my other sister was talking to that sister, we began to just name possible places that we would go. Beloved, there ain't nowhere to go. Everybody is just seemingly deadlocked in conjecture wherever you go. And if you can find a sandy beach somewhere that's not inhabited by a whole lot of people, if you don't watch, once you get there, somebody going to follow you there. And the first thing they're going to do is argue about the sand when they get to you. Lord, we need to pray. The world is being consumed in arguments that's distracting us from what's really important. Folks are either pro-Israel or pro-Palestine. Somebody need to say amen. People are pro-defending Ukraine's sovereign right to exist as a nation, and we need thus to send them all of the finances and support and weapons to defend themselves, or you're pro-staying out of the fight and just simply letting Russia do to Ukraine, in essence, what Germany did to Poland at the start of World War II. And you know what happened then. It pulled everybody else into the conflict. But that is a debate and an argument sometimes disrespectfully that continues to persist. Interesting enough, there are multiple Holy Scripture verses. Because we live through the word, so we're going to share the word this morning because the word is being ignored. It's interesting enough, there are multiple Holy Scripture verses warning us of the dangers of all this arguing and violent disagreement. There is, yes, I'm a pastor, and they got bishops and apostles and all these other titles that we fall under. Even the Pope. <laughs> Pope always fussing about you know, people that he disagree with. Constant arguments by these people that are supposed to be leading us examples. I confess myself today. If the church is arguing, the world don't have a chance. And clearly all of us blood washed folk as well as the carnal world, is ignoring the truth that's in the Holy Writ. So let's examine some of it. Endless scriptures. <sighs> Warning us, imploring us to go in another direction other than our anger and the contention that is a byproduct of our anger. Scriptures such as the wise, experienced musings of King Solomon in the Hebrew book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 9, and I want to <clears throat> Let y'all know before I read this, I'm not scared at all. Where the king states, it is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. 
I said it. Let me read it again. It's better to dwell. And now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to embellish upon these words and make them my own. Can I? Can I? King Solomon. It's better to be on the corner of your roof than with a brawling woman in the expanse of a wide house. Lord knows that's the truth. It's the truth! Or another example of King Solomon's wise observances. Now this one is a little bit more equal, has more equity to it. Wise and valid nonetheless. King Solomon's wise observances, this time in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6. And in this example, we're going to use the New American Standard Bible where King Solomon states, a fool's lips, whether that be a male or female fool. We got some foolish men out there. I confess my own foolishness just a few moments ago in time past. A fool's lips bring strife. And watch this, his mouth invites beatings. And y'all wonder why some of us are missing our teeth. Because somebody went in that mouth because that mouth was too loose or too smart. Lord have mercy. It has been greatly posited by the Most High through his messenger Amos. Lord, I'm literally quoting this at least once a week. Amos in the Hebrew book ascribed to him, chapter three, verse three. New International Version here of the English translation where the prophet speaks the words of the Most High inquiring and making the inquiry do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Let me answer that. No. If we ain't in agreement, no, we're not walking together. If I can give an example in Genesis about what occurred and the outcome of when the Most High confused the, the languages of mankind and made their languages many and diverse instead of just one singular language. Everybody separated, and we've been separated since. We can't understand one another. It, argumentiveness and just violence and confusion ensued, and people went their own separate ways. No, we can't walk together unless we agree. No, we can't walk together unless we are in reason. Paul the Apostle even warned the body Ecclesia at Ephesus chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Here, we're using the Berean Study Bible of the English translation. Apostle Paul warned to be angry, yet do not sin. We're still trying to figure that out. Do they have classes in college for that? Be angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger. And do not give the devil a foothold. Some of us, as we aforementioned, have already given that devil, that Satan, that foothold already in the day is young. 11 a.m., a few minutes after that, and somebody is already convicted by this word because you woke up angry, because you laid down angry. We're believers, yet we're ignoring all of this wisdom that's in this word that was left on record for our learning. Beloved, we're running out of time. Do you see the condition that the world is in? Do you see the condition that our relationships are in? Do you see the condition that the church is in, what we call the church? The governments are in. Yet we never tire of all of this combativeness, not listening to one another, not being patient, not being humble. Yet over and over, Beloved, we have all in many instances in our lives, all of us, isn't it amazing how this is all encompassing? Some in the recent past and some currently, possibly even this morning, once again, chosen the path of combative arguments and wrath rather than pursuing peace, love, and humility. I'm closing, beloved. It has cost us valuable relationships. This is why we need this family and friends. More importantly, this is why we need to break bread with one another and try to see if we can mend and come into a new covenant. It's cost us relationships just because of our differing opinions or somebody felt disrespected or somebody ain't know how to talk to somebody else. All of this immaturity. Don't let the devil feel or make you feel like that this is insurmountable, that we can't overcome the way that we communicate based upon how we feel intrinsically. A lot of it is just immaturity. We won't grow up. 
it has all but decimated, listen, our offspring. Do we even care about our children anymore? What they've been exposed to? I know myself and Lady Joy, we still apologetic. What's done is done, but we got to pray. But you got to live an example and live repentive. We got to seek healing because my Lord, the damage that's been done to these babies. Don't be too proud to admit it. And in some unfortunate cases, yes, it has cost far too many people their actual lives. This ought not be, beloved. King Solomon wrote in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, NIV here, what we're referencing, that a gentle answer turns away wrath. When the last time you had a gentle answer? You got to deal with what you're dealing with. A lot of times we speak to one another the way that we speak to them because, hey, I'm not saying that you don't have love for the people in your lives, but you may not like them any longer. You know that's possible, right? To still have love for someone, I'll always love. We hear it on movies. Some of us say, I said, I'll always love you because you're the mother of my children. I always love you because you're the father of my children. I'll always have love for you, but I don't like you. It's, listen, that can apply to our children. There have been times... I, I'll give my life all my children now. Love them passionately. Didn't like them at all. Nor their choices. I'll be honest if y'all won't. And Lord knows I can speak for my children. Y'all know y'all don't like y'all parents most of the time. When is honesty going to begin to take over in the body of the Christ? But right here, see, there's a reason why our answers are not gentle with one another. We waking up choosing violence. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But that's not what we're doing. We're not turning away wrath with gentleness. Do we know anything about that proverbial concept in practice? Beloved, I close with the wise message spoken through the Most High's prophet Isaiah in the first chapter of Isaiah. And... The opening words of the 18th verse, which states, come now, come on now, let us reason together. It's time that we come to the table with the expressed objective to be peace. If we can't do it, why are we expecting it, beloved, in the body of Christ? If we can't do it, why are we expecting it of the world? We need to reason, beloved, not argue and fight and bicker. We need to reason. Be pragmatic. What's rational? If there is a, a, a cause, there's certainly going to be a, an effect. So turn that around. If we're suffering an effect that has caused our love and our understanding to break down, then why don't we reason to examine what the cause is? Not continue to fight and violently argue. Love it. It has been impressed upon me by the Holy Ghost to impress upon you that we need to engage in reason with an objective of peace before it's eternally too late. Amen. Our lives shouldn't mirror the storms that has practically destroyed parts of the world during the history of this world. Are you a nuclear bomb? Some of us, yeah. But <laughs> the cross is nigh unto us. Isn't it a blessing that there's grace, that there's love that can cover this multitude of sins of us all, shepherd man included? Don't continue to let your name be attached to the bombs that they dropped on Japan during World War II. Somebody shouldn't be naming an aircraft carrier after you. Let's end all of this violence among ourselves. Let's truly exhibit the power of redemption that is in that blood that we say we've received. Amen? Let's pray over this one because we need to pray. Before we pray, I mean, this is just on my spirit. We, so many of us have discipline in so many different other areas. We, we've lost 
pounds and we've taken on healthier lifestyles after suffering maladies. We've saved money and invested. Some of y'all are rather well off. Help us with the four quarter initiative of 2024. But I digress again. Yeah, how you just slipped that in there, Shepherd Man. But see, some of us are well off. We've got discipline in so many different areas, but we can't mind our tongue when we're upset. Heaven help us all. Let's reason together, shall we? Father, we thank you for always chastening us and giving us the opportunity to walk rightly in your eyesight. Scripture says you love who you chase, and we don't always like it. Rebuke doesn't seem good for the moment, but we thank you for your love and your compassion towards us. We appreciate your mercy, but we can't sit in the mercy seat forever. We appreciate your grace. So Heavenly Father, we're asking right now that if anyone is desirous of a change in their walk, forgiveness for their sins, propitiation for the wrong that they've done. We believe it's nigh to everyone that believes this morning because of the powerful sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach, the Christ, that died on the cross but didn't stay dead, rose again but didn't just rise. He ascended to you where he's sitting on your right hand, making intercession right now, which we believe today's powerful blessing is an example of saying intercession. Make us and save us, Heavenly Father. The original word in Romans 10 and 9 used by Paul the Apostle is sozo out of the Greek, which means that you rescue us and preserve us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name. Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're praying for Papa New Day and the family of landscape sister Brittany New Day. We're praying for Bishop facing a procedure. We pray that the most high guide, the experts in the surgeon's hands. We pray for mom, Diana. We just pray for everybody that's in need of prayer. Continue to call out folks' names in prayer. Meet us this week at Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday Bible study and question and answer. You're missing it. And you're missing insight that you need if you don't meet with us there. We're there weekly. Sometimes we're online on Sabbath, but we're every week we're in Bible study in person. Join us for that great family and friends day. And beloved, don't argue, but love and live in peace this Saturday Sabbath. Peaceful day of rest to you. Shabbat shalom.